Uh, on Friday, in the initial response, the market was down a great deal, but it ended down what I would call sort of normal day down. It wasn't down all that much, equities weren't, and today stocks are basically flat. Is the market discounting the heightened risk appropriately or not? Uh, it's hard to say. Sometimes it's hard to explain the vagaries of the market, right? Uh, what we do know is this, is that there's a lot of speculation. Uh, investors, particularly well-disciplined investors, focus on facts. Uh, we actually are in a place in the market where uh, the facts indicate the economy is actually looking pretty decent. We're coming into a relatively positive earnings season. And uh, as long as interest rates remain low, uh, there should be uh, the ability to continue to see the trend that we've seen for the last year or two. So focus on what you would describe as the knowns, the facts, rather than the unknowns. Focus on earnings per share. Focus on corporate profit growth more than this. Indeed. That's exactly what you want to talk about. So let's talk about this quarter. We're about ready to enter fourth quarter during the season. The good news, we're at the end of that artificially inflated uh, high comps that came from tax reform that vexed the market all last year. Okay, So even though current expectations right now for down 1.5% growth for the S&P 500, those numbers will come in higher. It's unlikely that they will be below earnings one, growth, earnings growth. Earnings growth. Yes. year okay. over year, same quarter. And uh, so that's good news. Uh, the better news is that the next couple of quarters are expected to be even higher, four, five, and then 8%. We're going from a year, right, where we had basically 0.4% growth. That's currently where the estimate is, to next year where we're looking for annualized earnings growth of 8%. So that's good. Absent Interest rates. So how, why the hell did the market go up 30% if, if, if earnings were flat? You know, there's a lot of different factors and there's a lot of different answers to that. But one of the big ones is just what you get from the, the alternatives, fixed income markets. As long as you have low interest rates and you have the S&P 500 giving you a 2% dividend and another 3% in stock buybacks, you're getting 5% of earnings growth right there. Relative, to, everything's relative. If you look at what you can get, for example, in the 10-year, and if you have a 10-year below 2%, equities... Where else are you going to go? Number. Exactly. Well, Scott, let's talk about where we were and where we are. We ended the holiday season talking about a phase one trade deal and a lot of optimism for 2020. We start the new year with all of this news coming in about heightened tensions in the Middle East. Does that change your calculus and your outlook for 2020? Well, you know, for us, Contessa, when you have these geopolitical events, you have to determine, you know, what's going to be the effect on the economy, uh, what's going to be the effect then ultimately on, on earnings. And right now, the stock market is telling us that, you know, it doesn't believe that we're going to see uh, the price of oil scream higher. I mean, oil's down for the day the last time I looked, and, and um, it's within the $55 to $65 range that we've been expecting for year in 2020. So, you know, the market's not in panic mode, and that's what it's all about. You know, higher oil prices, higher gasoline prices gives consumers less money to spend on discretionary things. So really, for the market, it boils down to some pretty simple things. Is this going to hurt consumer spending? Is it going to jack up uh, corporate uh, corporate expenses? Is it going to damage earnings? And right now, the market doesn't think a whole lot of that's going to happen. So, you know, the modest growth, modest inflation environment uh, that really has been in place for a, for a number of years here, uh, Fed not making a mistake, easy central banks, um, not much of a so, chance for a recession. So, um, Scott, you know, what, what does that mean for how you're positioning portfolios heading into this well, year? Well, I, I tell you, Contessa, here's what we did. It, last year, uh, as the market ran ran up. Um, we've been leaning cyclically, in, you know, industrials, technology, consumer discretionary for years. Uh, we also like financials. Uh, we backed off of industrials. We thought the stock market ended the year slightly ahead of what we felt fair value was. We think it'll be pretty close to here uh, at the end of the year. So what we've done is we took some risk off the table. We raised a little cash. Um, and then this year, we continue to like technology. Uh, we continue to like the consumer discretionary sector. We like financials. You know, we don't want our clients hiding yet because we don't think this expansion is over. And really, uh, opportunities 
um, are going to come in the form of volatility. You look over the last 18 months, you know, investors had lots of opportunities to buy stocks at much lower levels than we are right now. So based on our macro outlook, you know, we're and looking for opportunities. And yet they didn't, Scott, yet they didn't buy. They, they pulled they didn't. money out of stock funds and you they know, poured it into bond funds yet again. That's right. You know, you you know, Ty, you know, I, I mean, we're dealing here with a lot of retail investors. Retail investors, in our opinion anyway, they've been sitting on way too much cash for this entire rally. Uh, and, and, and we've come to think about it, seeing some of the stats that we've seen. Not only have they been overweight cash, so to speak, but they've been underweight technology and technology was up 47 yeah. percent last year. Yeah. So, you know, you guys talk about the market up 30 percent. And then when retail investors look at their statement, they're going, God, I'm not up 30%. Well, you've got too much no, cash. No, no wonder. You aren't exposed to the right <laughs> sectors. All you know? right.